pass from Havili was magic. The shift on for Crotty. Boom, far down you go, Quackett Smith. Me, oh my, I haven't enjoyed that. Yes, boy. Sit back, relax, put your belt on, and enjoy the show. Because this is a very short podcast, let's move on to a very short deserto. Um, before, things get, before things get too out of hand, um, I think you guys are one or two bottles of wine down. Now you're starting to sound more and more like, you know, Sylvester Stallone kind of. But um, points uh, to look forward to for next year. So in wrapping up, um, Super Rugby Aotearoa, um, look, we're not going to go through all the squad lists, but they've been announced and we've kind of touched on it a little bit. It's exciting. There's like every year, there's new talent new players that have emerged from the Mitre 10 competition. But what I'm really excited to see is they've kind of, uh, last year you felt like some of the teams, the talent was a little more centralised. So there were, it felt like it was first time in years there was a few teams that were lacking a little bit, particularly, I don't know, I'd say the Highlanders, the Hurricanes, just felt like weaker sides than they had been in the past uh, compared to the other three. And it looks like they kind of spread the players around a little bit more. So I think it'll be a much closer and more competitive uh, competition next year. And, um, yeah, look, I, I, there's some exciting names like, there. I feel like this is you purely looking at the Highlanders team and going, how good does that team look? <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, even even the Hurricanes... Um, no, there's the just Hurricanes like... Ring in? I forget off the top of my head, but... Uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's just like... I guess no there's one. been... There's positions that have been filled. The, Simon like, Higgy. The specific wow. positions that teams were lacking in have been filled. But, no, I mean, the, Hurricanes, Hur- put it out there, Hurricanes won't be that good. They're losing TJ Perinara. Sure, they've got Jamie Booth. They brought in Simon Hickey. Yeah, he's definitely their answer at 10. Yeah, but they're just um, going to play Geordie Barrett at, t- at 10. That's what they're going to do. They're just going to move him into 10. Playing Garden Bash, mate. Right? Yeah. We said yeah. we wouldn't go into this. True. All we've, right, been, we've been absolutely w- <coughs> wooed by the Highlanders' recruitment strategy. It's it, the Highlanders, mate. <coughs> Very good. Well, with that, we'll move on. Nelson has touched on it many times, but um, Super Rugby AU 2021 winners, the Western Haguares. Um, look, they've got, we said now, confirmed five, or, five already test players signed. And um, look, they're all starting. You know, that's going to be Montoya, Medrano in the front row. Kubeji and uh, Jokes got him, uh, and uh, Miotti probably. I mean, Lazana, was it Lazana as well? Look, Lizana. I mean, Pryor's the captain at nine, and John O'Lance has been there at ten. But you wouldn't be surprised if you see see them um, hit the bench. Well, I, I'm I for one am disappointed about that. I, I'm absolutely okay with. You know, some Argentinian players, Argentine players coming across and filling into Super Rugby teams. That is far too many, especially when you have players from other countries being brought in. I mean, if you want to be one of five Australian Super Rugby teams, I love the force. And I'm okay with them not doing as well as, you know, as you'd expect for the next two, three years. You give them a bit of leeway to build, maybe bring some players home. But what I'm not okay with is just filling your team with people from overseas. As far as I'm concerned, as Harry's touched on before the pod, you're a barbarian side. You're not an Aussie rugby side. You've lost me. Look, I, I can uh, certainly confirm that because in um, earlier in the pod, when I said I went back through your tweets and I was watching you nervously wait what I came up with, there was a hell of a lot of... Uh, Horned Army tweets, but also uh, Force Love tweets. Um, I love the Force. I know, just so I can just say. Mm. I'm I'm a humongous fan of the Force, and this is not the Force. This is a team trying to buy a comp that they're not going to win. They're going to be disappointed. These players are going to be less good for their countries. They're going to go away. We're not going to, you know, we're going to stifle the growth of players coming through. I think it's a bad thing. On the whole, perhaps, but look, it's going to be it's going to make Super Rugby AU more competitive, and by that I mean surely the force notch up a win. Maybe, uh, maybe for a year, but you you've got to say these players need to learn to play together. And you know, Ben Darwin, we interviewed him a few weeks ago. Highly recommend that podcast, by the way. Um, <laughs> great pod, not because of us. What uh, episode number is it, Harry? He mentioned, he mentioned that for every player you bring in, you completely turn off two or three of the developing young players because they don't see a future there because the, the older guys have just been brought back. So, I mean, they're trying to develop their, their juniors. Surely this is just setting that whole program back a long time. I get it. They didn't think that those players were ready for next year, but they're just cutting themselves at the knees. 
Yeah, bring back a few, maybe bring back a few Australian experienced players who have already been in the force because there's a lot of those yeah, that's right. who have been lost overseas. I mean, your Curtis Rohners, your Bill Meeks. Adam you, Coleman. Yeah, yeah, your Adam Coleman's. You have a lot of players. David Perkoff. <laughs> <laughs> please, please bring him back. But no, I, I seriously find that this is, this is a big issue moving forward for them. If you, if you want to be in this long term, you can't try to buy it once off. That's what they did the first time they came into existence. And they brought a lot of players across for them. And they did very poorly. And then they realized that didn't work. And they started to build a side. And just before we kicked them out, that's when they got to a point where I think they were a very good super rugby side. Full of Aussies. Pretty and good. a very... No, they were very good compared to... As an Australian super rugby side... That against the other Aussie sides. They were better than the Tars when they left. It's because it's they were just starting to see the fruits of their labour, of the, the grassroots program. They were starting to see Western Force developed players actually come through up to the Super Rugby level. And yeah, that was the, the toughest thing about cutting them. But um, had to happen. All right, well, look, what else have we got? I guess we have touched on it before, I think at the end of a few pods, but... What's very exciting as well is the the lineup of the dates for both Super Rugby AU and Super Rugby Alto Roa next year. They're not the nineteenth and the twenty sixth of Feb is when they're kicking off, so one week apart. And this means, um, and you'll have to correct me if I'm wrong here, but we have a nine week uh, fantasy competition that lines up uh, with both competitions running. Uh, in parallel, which is great. It means we can run this similar fantasy rugby format to what we did this year with 10 teams. Um, and that, that's fantastic. I'm very excited about that. Um, yeah, we, look, I, I think it worked very well this year. It's going to work better next year um, with the way it lines up. So I, I'm very excited for it. A longer season. Maybe. Is, is there any... I guess, should we ask our listeners to throw out, is there any suggestions in terms of... Um, Anything we should change? I mean, I think we worked it out with uh, every every manager of our eight managers in our league get uh, 15 starting players and one reserve forward and one reserve back. Uh, is there any uh, anything else we can think of to rejig it? Or we, I don't know. I guess we will have to... For me, that's the obvious way to go unless you split into two pools of four, which I, I don't like the idea of. It's a conferences, yeah. Yeah, we, and obviously each of those pools would have uh, individual player pools to pick from. Mm. I don't like that, like I said. But if we hang out for 2022, looking forward to the future, if there is a couple of new sides in the competition, then all of a sudden you can pick four or five bench players. And, you know, we start to get back to the original draft rugby fantasy footy platform that we had with a little bit more leeway for those substitutes. But, man, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know about you. I really, really enjoyed playing with the two subs as well. I don't think it made a big difference to the product. Of well, how a lot more strategy. Up. I think it, yeah, I think it made a difference, but I think it made a strategic difference, as you said. I think you had to know, you had to be better at trading, you had to be better at looking towards the future, and, and you know, you could hold on to your valuable player or two, but yeah, you couldn't just hold a whole squad. Going yep. through certain weeks, you had a plan. Agreed. Look, very exciting. It's been a big year from us here at, at Draft Rugby at the Draft Rugby Show. Uh, I think this is going to conclude us for a final year. We're going to take some much needed rest over the next uh, couple of months before um, ramping up again in, in January. We'll be busier than ever to Research. get ready. That's yeah. it. Okay. So, <laughs> especially me. That's true. I do need to bounce back from the losing the grand final. So from second place, it was tough. But um, First last. Very good. Anyway, we'll catch you again in uh, the next year. New year. All right.